Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at our BRICS PLC numbering systems and addressing. And the first thing we will do is actually connect to our PLC using our USB connection that we did last time. And I'll just double click on it. You can see we're reading the information and there we're connected. And the first thing you'll see is our dashboard coming up here. And as I move the cursor over the dashboard you'll see that here's my inputs and my inputs automatically come up and tell me where my addresses are physically on this controller so what we did was we established communication it went out it read the information in the controller pulled it back in so that we could see exactly what's uh, going on with our addressing and this is a fixed addressing as we add more modules uh, it automatically assigns those um, addresses. Now, that's not to say that we can't change them. So, periodically, if we wanted to change them, we could just do that quite easily. So, here, if we, we put our cursor over, you'll see that we have our inputs here, and it shows our discrete inputs, our filter values, which is actually the speed at which we can read inputs through that I.O. point and that's adjustable using changing our filter values so that when we use high-speed counters on this unit we can go up to 250 kilohertz. Um, you'll see our analog input here we see that there's no scaling it defaults to 0 to 5 volts DC and the addresses is w, WX0 and WY0. Our outputs our discrete outputs the IO map is Y0 to 7 we have our, our axis and pulse output, output information. We have our pulse width modulated outputs and we have our table driven outputs that you can see there. If we actually click that we'll actually be able to see the onboard I.O. in data view and data view is just a way of looking at the data within our controller at any given time and what you'll see is uh, here's all my axes uh, which are my inputs they're x0 to x9 and we have our outputs y0 to y7 we have our um, analog in and then we have our analog out. So let's take a look at that, um, our actual outputs themselves. And in order for us to uh, edit this, we'll uh, click on the edit and we'll actually flick the PLC into run mode so that it's actually going to trigger that output. So we turn that one on and then we'll say right to the controller, you'll see that output 0 now comes on. If we want 7 on, we'll turn 7 there and we'll again write that and um, to the controller and oh, there we go, now it's on. Write that to the controller and you can see now that 7 and 0 are on. Okay, so that's uh, actually our um, data and the way we address in the BRICS PLC. So we'll change that back into the run mode there. And we'll just close this off. We won't save it. So it's a quick way of looking at your I.O. and seeing exactly what's there. Right, the next thing we're going to take a look at is actually our element browser. And in our element browser, if we go to search, we see our element browser up here or F9 and what it will do is show us a, um, a history of our, all the memory locations that we see in our controller and our controller actually uses a strong data typing. That basically means that these are all fixed areas of memory that we can work with within the controller and it helps us because if we were to put a value that doesn't belong in that register it will give us an error and tell us look we're doing something that we shouldn't be doing. So here's all my different area types and it doesn't mean that we're actually locked into this because the do more is very powerful we can actually uh, change those data memory structures a little bit make them bigger make them smaller we can actually make our own uh, data blocks and memory structures within the controller itself and we'll do that in a minute the one thing we we can also do is we can uh, what they call cast and we can cast variables from one form into another. So if we look at the show cast builder, which is right down here, and let's take a, um, a V0 memory, and you'll see here that it is a word, it's an unsigned word, and we see it right there. If we would like the bit value within that word, 
we can just select bit and then we'll say we want the um, the 11th bit of that word what you'll notice is up here at the top it now says v0 colon 11 that is the casting that if we want to use the bit location within that register in our program that's how we do it okay so these are very powerful you can see that we have time and date information we have the physical input and output which are the x and the y's uh, our analog signals um, we have the d memories we have um, timers and counter memories etc so a whole list of this is back on our website at accautomation.ca and it goes through each one of those memory and what it, what it will actually do for us. So if we exit out of that, the other thing we can do is actually configure our memory. Now there's a couple ways we can get to that configuration menu. We can hit this icon up here. We can also go down here to system uh, configuration here. We can go to PLC and then go down to system uh, configuration. And when we do, we have another menu that pops up. And on the left hand side, if we go down to memory configuration, again, here are all of our uh, information within this controller. And let's take a look at our C, which are bits in there. So if we want to edit that block of memory and make it bigger, we'll just say edit memory. And then what we can do is we can now change that from 2048, we'll say to uh, 4096. So now it's just double our uh, information that's in there. This here also, we can uh, tell whether it's going to be memory retentive or non-memory retentive. So we can say nothing, we can say the entire block, or we can say only this range within the block that will be memory retentive. Again, totally up to you how you want to program uh, those memory blocks. So we'll just say OK. And now you'll notice our configuration we actually have 0 to 4095 or 4096 bits that we can use within that block of memory. And because we're online, it automatically saves that back into the controller for us, so we don't have to worry about it. If we want, we can actually add our own memory block, and what we have to do is just give it a name. We'll just call it uh, DM for data memory. We'll say that it is a um, unsigned word and then it tells us our block size. Well, let's go uh, 4,096. So we're gonna have 4,096 16-bit words. And what we'll do is we'll say the entire block, again, is memory retentive. And then our addressing that you see here is gonna be DM0 to DM4096. Uh, okay. So we'll say okay. And now, if we look at our system here, we now have a DM, it's an unsigned word, and there are our ranges, and it's it's a user um, built, it's not built in. So this is what we just created, this whole new structure of memory for us to use in our programs. Okay. So that's it for now, and all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. And if you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to accautomation.ca and subscribe to our website. When you do, you'll get notification every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third, things, the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.